Hello everyone, and welcome to one of my favorite adventure games, the Blackwell series. Now, um, a little thing, I have not actually played through the entirety of the Blackwell series, I've only played this one game, of which I, it's been a few months since I've played it, so yeah, but I did buy the entire series on Steam, so yeah, um, being an adventure game, this is kind of old, um, we're probably going to be- This is very loud, by the way, the intro screen is very loud, but I have to talk. It's going to be a little weird. This is a little small, because it is an older game. I believe the newer games actually have, like, more options, because, like, this is the entire options menu! <laughs> and by the way, it looks more pixelated for me, it looks better for you guys, so that's good. But I'm gonna start a new game! Um... I am not going to activate in-game instructions. No. Yeah, exe. See? Because you can do this. Okay. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you, but you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. That drum and bass though. By the way, Dave Gilbert's a pretty cool guy. He has some great games, so you should look at him if you haven't. I love the art in this game, by the way. It's such, such good art. Such good art. What a morning. At least I'm home now. By the way, this is... This one theme is basically <laughs> one of the major music themes. So, um, to give you an idea, the Blackwall Legacy is a mystery game. It is an adventure game, however. So, like, I'm gonna be doing some... I'm gonna be doing a lot of walking. Um, we are this gal. We are- this is our protagonist. We will learn more about her in the future. So yeah, that's a- that's a thing. Like I said, our options are... A little bit more! <laughs> but yeah, not that much. So we have inter uh, interacting with objects slash characters. Looking up, I just- using inventory, activating comfort, using notebook, combining clues in your notebook. So we haven't gotten to these two. Yeah, because we haven't gotten to the notebook part. But that'll be fun, trust me. There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. So yeah. There are bars over. Yeah, she says most of the stuff. Obviously, like any adventure game. So let's talk to a uh, teenager. Oh, this is gonna be good, I'm sure. Hi there. Um, hi. So who are you visiting today? Who's this fucking catcher in the rye ass motherfucker? <laughs> Doesn't he look like like at least this is how I've always imagined Holden Caulfield to look like? I mean. Different hair, obviously, and outfit, but like that face that he has when you zoom in. Express surprise, laugh it off, make an inquiry. We're gonna express huh? surprise. Seriously, huh? who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Cause, who the fuck is this who teenage ass kid? Jim Birdo. Alright, Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> Listen, I really live Yeah, I think here. giving your address would Fourth help. floor number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. 
Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason, thank God. You have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True. But I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. You see, threaten violence is what I would do. Because I'm a guy and I'm really fucking big. I'm like six feet tall. Big burly muscles, you know? The whole thing. But... She's the shortest gal. Even though she does look like she could probably kick your teeth in. I don't think she's going to be doing that anytime soon. So, yeah, um... <laughs> I think it might be a better idea for us to not threaten violence. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Now, let's just state the facts. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Hashtag introvert problems. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Also, just side note, I love the voice acting in this game, so I'm actually going to try my hardest to shut up when people are talking. But yeah, I just, ugh, I just love the freaking I love the soundtrack to this I love the voice acting it's a great game I love it so much and you'll see it has even more elements in it that are great I'm not gonna spoil what the general premise of this game is it's a mystery like many adventure games are so I'll spoil that much for you but as far as to what the mystery is how we're solving the mystery what the hell the black wall legacy is who auntie is all that other stuff I'm gonna keep that under wraps and I'm gonna try to let you guys discover it along with me. How long is strike. this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days, depending on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. Damn. Uh, this guy's not going to do anything, really, honestly. Let's just ask okay. for help, see what we can do. I have do. no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? <laughs> Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You can look for her there. Yeah, I'm I'll just gonna back. take my leave. See you around. It's not really worth asking all the questions right now. I mean, in the future I ask all the fucking questions. But for now, I've been through this part of the game, I know that doesn't really matter. So, we have a letter. So I'm gonna read this letter. Or, yeah, I'm gonna read it, so, yeah. October 12th, 2006. That lets you know how old this game is. It's from the mid-2000s. Dr. Donald Quinton, Bellevue Medical Hospital, New York, New York. Mrs. Blackwell, or Miss Blackwell, my bad. Don't wanna, don't wanna make it seem like she's in something that she ain't. My name is Dr. Donald Quinton, and I was your aunt's primary care physician here at Belleville Hospital. I have seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I am sure we have much to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quinton, MD. So yeah, this is the letter you get. This is kind of like the start. So this kind of gives you a little bit of information. Um, Bellevue Medical Hospital. So Auntie was sick, apparently. That's what we do know. Um, she, Auntie has been in, you know, medical care. Aunt Blackwell has for 25 years, so she's been gone for a while. So this sets our character at least at 25 or so, I'm guessing, considering Auntie seems to be the person that raised us. And um, she's dead now, so yeah. Now, other than that, we don't really know what this character does, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. So we're gonna go out of here. So we have the Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital. Mm. Rosa's apartment, which is, our, our character's name is Rosa, by the way. We're Rosa, that's our name. And watching Square Park. So, what I'm going to do is, 
I'm going to go to the psychiatric hospital first, then I'm going to go to Washington Square Park. Locked. Whatever's back there, I can't get to it. <laughs> this nice, easy listening. Also, like, I love- can I just say I love the sprite work in this game? Like, look at this. It's so nice. And it only improves as the game series goes on. And by the way, yes. I'm doing the whole series. <laughs> I love this series way too much. At least I've loved the first game, and I hope this other games continue you to be as well. To open as it. good. Yeah, there's a fuse box. By the way, if you don't know adventuring game rules, if you can interact with it, it kind of works by Chekhov's gun. If you can interact with it, at some point you're going to be using it. In some way, shape, or form, most of the time. Call. Unless it's supposed to be a red herring. But in that case, it kind of that's its purpose, so yeah. And click on the I'm stuff. not stealing stuff from the hospital. And you can right Some click. Some kind of motivational poster. Yeah. If you, uh, if you just want to look at something, you can just, you know, uh, it's right click to look at stuff, left click to interact. So looks like, like an internal phone for paging doctors or patients, I guess. Yeah. So I can do that. So I'm gonna keep going. This is the info desk. There's a guard. Radio. Just a small transistor radio. God, transistor radios. I haven't it seen those in ages. This floor is undergoing renovations. That explains a lot. Like, I haven't seen this kind of radio in forever. Like, nowadays, this guy'd be like, having his earbuds in or something, or like just one in or something. I don't know. But it's funny. Some small keys. One of them is labeled FB. I assume that means fuse box. Uh -huh. I don't think I need any of these. She's like, you know, I don't need I'm it. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, so. This guy's the guard, you can ask about stuff. Okay, so, let's start this. Ask about the lights. the lights. Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. <laughs> this guy has a really bad baby face. Did you ask have contact auntie. with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. I so what temporary exactly ward. happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when new patients arrive. Ah, the American healthcare system it was shitty back then, and it's shitty now. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay, looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door, you can't miss it. Thanks. We're just gonna run off into the sunset there. Come in. I like this guy's work a lot. Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. Well, he stands you got my desk too. Adjust. Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Mother? Stirring correction, polite correction, simple correction. I'm gonna go... Honestly, she doesn't say much, but I'm gonna go polite, because this guy is a psychiatrist. I feel like he deserves a little bit of respect. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Uh, I'm gonna complain about my day, because you know what, that's what you do in life. <laughs> Just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's, I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes, I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. I think I have an honest response. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her, or even remember her from before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? How about her family? I feel like, honestly, for her it'd be more habit. Habit, I guess. It was a place to go every week. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? 
It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. I'd be defensive okay. in that case. I am this close to leaving. Why am I here? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case, and now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. I'm gonna ask about Auntie's condition. Because, I mean, we're, we're kind of setting up the game right here. This is the prologue, basically, to the actual game. Um, as you can see, we're Rosa, we're having a pretty bad day. We write book reviews in the paper, so we're a journalist of sorts. Like a book reviewer, you know? Sort of a journalist. Um. Oh damn. It stopped. Okay. But yeah. We are... We are in many ways... Like, just... be kind of thrown into this without too much knowledge. Which I actually kind of like in this sense. Um... So, yeah. All that. I'm gonna... I just thought I'd cover that. Because... It's a little weird. But yeah. That's about Auntie's you condition. You could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to Auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. I'm going to ask about Auntie's words, because I feel like that's kind of the direct path here. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams, well... We had to gag her eventually. My god. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. Jesus Christ, I forgot it was that bad. So... Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it, there was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize, I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. 
Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. So, eh, the thing. ask about links. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases. None, aside from the family connection. Interesting. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Ooh. So yeah, that's the thing. I'm going to ask about the future, because I want to go through full questions here, because you guys are kind of... I feel like you should know as much as you can. Once we leave this place, I'm going to end the episode, and then I'm going to start right back up on the next episode. So yeah, let's so ask what about the future. Right now, nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. All right, leave is the there office. anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. Oh, well, it's after we read that, I guess. Some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh. Oh. Unless well, that. thanks for that. Yeah. It's no problem at exactly. all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. All right then. So yeah, that's the end of episode one. In the Blackwall Legacy. This is an amazing game. I love this game. So, you know, for you people out there that are like, oh, want to see more, you know, view, like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Uh, thank you all for coming here today. And don't you forget about me. <laughs>